Hello everybody. ¿Cómo están? Ian Lewis here. And welcome to Exploring Together. Yesterday we had a beautiful day exploring the main attraction of this city. But today, today we're doing something different. Because today we're going to be exploring the B side of London, the very fun part of this city. And we are going to walk deep in the streets of this megapolis. In this episode of not only from churches, skyscrapers, and museums live the man. We are going to be exploring the main markets of London. And at the end of the day, I will be ranking from worst to best each of the markets that we visit today. And we will be choosing every single one of them according to three factors. The first one is mood. How much city life do we have in the market? The second one is variety. How many products and what crazy things can we find in it? And the third one, of course, what keeps our wallet healthy? The price of the things that you can find. So let's begin our market city tour exploration because we have arrived to our first destination. And that is Portobello Market. Well known for the beautiful houses and also where Notting Hill movie with the gorgeous Julia Robert was filmed. In Portobello Market you will find some very interesting and old things which are hard to find somewhere else. Yet it is important to mention that street food or vibe aren't exactly the strengths of this market. Magnifying glass, oh I can see you now! <laughs> From 19th century compass to old tea makers, and of course, the always touristy attractive postcards and souvenirs. Portobello Market is a place where you will find a wide variety of gadgets, which certainly are very interesting and curious things to see. Alright, so here we have some very old and antique things. Pelé used to play with these ones, eh? That last store was something different, very very nice. It was expensive though. It is very expensive, but that's because you are shopping uncommon things. If you're interested in antique products, then this is the place where you should go. Yet be prepared to spend a few dozens or even hundreds of pounds. Me, I'm just going with the souvenirs. Look at this. Nice clock. I kind of like this one. All right, guys, we have just bought our very first thing. Look at this clock. It's freaking insane. <laughs> I have always wanted to have one of these. Oh, allow me, please. It's quarter to 12. These are the kind of things that you go party with so you can impress the mamacitas. Hello, lady. Look at my clock. <laughs> okay, my dear explorers, we are now heading to the underground because we are heading to our next market. Something very curious is that it is always so hot in the London underground. Here we go. Okay, my friends, we are close to arrive to our second destination, which is the Borough Market. By the way, look at the view we have of the Shard. Guys, this place is so much more fun, but it is mostly a food market, and that makes me hungry. <laughs> Even though Borough Market is mostly food, technically speaking, there is a huge variety of products for you to buy. Choose from different places of the world, sweets, German wurst, Indian and Kurdish food, sandwiches, vegetables and pork. Also, there was street music and people almost everywhere. Yet, the very best, the view to the Shard and Southwark Cathedral. Look at what I just got myself. Some... Oh. This is a Londoner. Oh, mm. damn, this is good. Oh! Alright my friends, just finished my delicious burger and the paint. It was really nice. <laughs> but we have left behind the Borough Market and we are now heading to the Spittersfield one. We are currently crossing the London Bridge, look at this view.
So we have just arrived to this Petersfield market. Let's see what we find here. Interesting bird woman suits and Pocahontas shoes. Classic postcards, cool looking hats and some dope 3D cards were some of the most interesting things that I could find. Of course, there were clothes and some very, very expensive jackets. So, Spittersfield was actually really nice, it's just that it kind of felt like a shopping mall. And, and you know, when you go to a market, you don't want to go to a shopping mall, you want to go to a market. And the last thing, which is important to take into consideration, is that it was pricier. Just to put into comparison, the burger plus the pint, back in Borough Market, it cost me around 13.5 pounds. Here, the same combo would be around 15. 1.5 pounds for a meal is a difference. And in terms of mood and variety, neither of them really met my expectations. Not too far from Spittersfield is Shoreditch, which is our next destination. Which more than a normal market is kind of a street with many different stores. But to be honest and fair with the other markets, I didn't see as much people in the street. But I have to admit that this place has a lot of vibes. It's very alternative, you know. Plus, I also bought me this... I don't know what it is. Kind of... Banana with rice and a little bit of chicken wrap with a water for six pounds. And that is actually a cheap price for here in London. Probably one of the best food I have had so far in London. So spicy though. <sighs> really, really high spice this. So hot. You see, in 1888, there's a quite a horror story that happened here in Brick Lane. Because at least reported, six women died at the hands of an unknown serial killer. Now, the real cruel thing about all of this is that the way that these women were assassinated was something completely macabre. The bodies were found with a cut in their throats. Each extremity of the body was completely dismembered. And internal organs were removed. The person who did that was a complete crazy maniac. And the frustrating part of the history is that the police was never never able to find the responsible person of these crimes. And the second thing is that most of these women that were murdered were actually prostitutes. And that, after spending time in the red light district of Amsterdam, trying to understand the world of the prostitutes, kinda makes me feel very annoyed by the fact that nobody guarantees their protection. Where are you going? Can I come to tell me you don't want to Okay guys, it is time for us to head to our last destination the last market of the day. Kind of a pity because now there's way more movement than before in Baker Street. But that doesn't really matter, I already created my opinion. And it's actually a really good one. I really enjoyed the neighborhood, the graffitis, the street art, and the environment with the mood. What's something special? Alright, alright, we have arrived to Candem Town and what a beautiful day we're having, eh? Completely changed from what it was before. No clouds at all. Oh, guys, I have to admit that this place is so much fun. <laughs> There's a lot of mood, many things to see. I have to admit, so far I have found something mind blowing, mostly souvenirs, but so far it's been very interesting. Look, an elephant. One of these, you really don't want to get your ass kicked, eh? So I think that I already have the winner in this list. It even has the clocks I bought before. This place does kind of have it all. Mood, for sure, there's a lot of people in the streets. And every commerce has some music going on, you know? Variety as well. I have to say though that there are too many souvenir stores. But once in a while you can also buy some very strange things. Some stores with some random clothes. Like where the bad people go to buy their things, you know? <laughs> 
Guys, I think I have to say, I am really liking this place. We even have some the Netherlands Canal. Time to give my final results. So let's begin our ranking from worst to the best one. Our first disqualified competitor, and for me, the worst market so far, Spittersfield. Why? No mood, pricey, and not so much variety. Number two, and our second disqualified competitor. And this is actually a very tough one because there are two competitors that are very close one to each other. So I'm still kind of thinking which one to choose. Okay, I got my answer. The second disqualified is Portobello Market. You might be wondering why? If it is so beautiful. Yes, it was very beautiful, but it was boring. Pricey and variety was actually a good one. Our next disqualified market is... Which actually was a surprise for me. The Borough Market. First of all, it had moved. It was a fun market to go. Second, prices were relatively fine. But third, and the reason why this is stuck in the middle of the list, is that it didn't have too much variety. It was basically a food market, which is fine, of course, but it didn't have anything else. To be honest, it had a lot of food from different countries, which makes it even better. But this is a list of the top overall markets, and that has to include everything. Food, products, mood, prices, it's all included. Very, very good. Okay, my friends, let's continue with what we came for. So, there are only two contenders left, which are by far the best markets in this city. Let's go ahead and choose the second best market of London. Being relatively cheap, having tons of mood. Really, the street art in that place was very, very dope, yeah? But I couldn't see as much people in the streets as number one. And the fact that I didn't find so many variety of products that you can buy makes Out of Brick Lane the second best market in this city. And that basically means that because of the variety of things that you can find, the mood that the market has, because damn it has a lot of style, eh? And also some sort of moderate prices that Camden Town certainly is the best market of this city. And just for you to know, I visited every single one of these markets in just one day, and that is a normal Wednesday. But yeah, Portobello is better on Sundays. I don't really know how they are during weekends, but I just made a very fair comparison according to what I saw today. I'm gonna give away this clock to whoever comments below something... I don't know, something nice. <laughs> so we're just randomly giving away between all of you who comments below. That is it for me today, guys. Kind of tired, London City is quite big. So now, I will just go and have some rest. All what you gotta do is like, share it, and subscribe. And I, my friend, will be seeing you soon. You, marketer, explorer, Look at this building is majestic. Feels like I'm we also have platform nine three quarters, which is a complete touristic invention. Look at this. <laughs> Cheers, England. Thanks for having me.